Oh, Jack Jackson back here again. In this video, we're going to be looking at how we can approximate a double integral from a contour graph. So as you recall, we just took a, uh, divided our region into little sub-rectangles and estimated the height on each rec sub-rectangle. We did that before in our previous video by looking at the formula or possibly the table or the graph. Here we're going to do the heights from a contour graph. So let's look at this. This also is going to be a, 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 a contextual example. Uh, made up data, of course, but, but still a contextual example. So let this contour graph represent the density of squirrels and the number of squirrels per square kilometer in a particular location. Okay, so we have a region here. It's going to go from negative 4 to 4 uh, on X and from negative 8 to 8 on Y. So here are a couple of questions for you. See if you can just answer these basic ones right off, off the bat. What's the total area of this region? What's the area of each of these subregions if we go with just the ones that are on the grid? And then sort of the big questions that are going to be that we're going to be looking at. How many squirrels are there totally in this rectangular region? And what's the average number of squirrels per square kilometer in this region? So see if you can answer a couple of those now. Well, uh, from negative 4 to 4 is 4 minus negative 4 is 8 wide, and uh, again, 8 minus a negative 8 is 16 tall. That multiplies together to be 128 square kilometers. Each one of these is 1 by 1 square, so each subrectangle has an area of 1 square kilometer. How many squirrels are, squirrels are there totally in this rectangular region? Well, the number is going to be the integral of this density function. The, the z values here are, I'm going to call delta for density, lowercase delta. And so if you just integrate that delta, that f of x, that f of xy or delta of xy or z of xy, whatever you want to call that, dA over that interval, that, that uh, region like this, that double integral is the number of squirrels. And then just divide that number by the total area, and then you've got average number of squirrels per square kilometer. So we need to estimate this double integral. All right, well, the first thing I did is I noticed that, uh, let's go back. This is completely symmetric about, the, uh, about this, uh, the x and y axes. So whatever you find in the first quadrant, you're going to have the same number in the second and in the third and the fourth. So we can just figure out what's in the first quadrant. We can multiply by four. That may cut down the work for us a little bit. So let's focus in on the first quadrant here. And you see that these numbers here are the, uh, the values of these contours. They go up to five. So this is also, I guess this would be 50, 55, and 60. Okay. So uh, let's see if you can do this on your own. See if you can work out and figure out what uh, would be uh, appropriate for n. Now think about it. All we have to do is multiply the area of each rectangle by the z value. And the z value has got to be something for that particular rectangle. So if we look at some of these, we have to, where could we start? Well, we could start by, um, I'll say the midpoint. So if you take this one, you look where the midpoint would be, it's going to be pretty close to this contour. So it's going to be about 25. You might say, well, wait a minute, I, I might need to adjust that a little bit more. You might say there's a little bit more above 25 or a little bit more below 25. You might be able to adjust that slightly from that. Uh, but if you go start with the point in the middle, uh, that will give you a pretty good starting point and adjust slightly from there. But certainly the number would have to be somewhere, say for this one here, would certainly be somewhere, it's definitely above 20, all these are above 20, uh, except for that very, very corner, they're all below 30, um, and, and this 25 is going pretty close to the middle, so something around 25-ish, uh, maybe maybe 26 might be better, something along that, that line would be appropriate for this one. See if you can go ahead and do this one yourself, I'm going to ask you to actually pause the video, work it out yourself, 
and then come back and check your answers against what I get. Pause video now. Okay, well you're back. Hopefully you've done done this. Let's uh, let's see what I came up with. They may not be the same numbers that you came up with, uh, but so we can adjust if we need to. So here are the numbers I came up with. Um, and again, these you could make an argument that these maybe not might need to be uh, adjusted a little bit, but we have have uh, have these different things. Looks like the top got cut off just a tit little bit there. Maybe I can fix that. Okay, here it is again. Where you can see the one on the top just a little bit better. If that helps you on the top, if you want to redo those, you can uh, pause if you need to, and then come back. Okay, again, here are the numbers I came up with. Uh, we could argue with this. Some of these may be off a little bit, but somewhere in this vicinity would be uh, somewhat reasonable for the numbers. So the red numbers are the numbers I came up with for each one. You can study those a little bit, but if you add all those up, uh, actually I have the results right here. Sorry. If you add those all the red numbers up, you get 934 uh and the units would be squirrels per kilometer, per square kilometer, the density units. And uh, each one of these has a common area of one kilometer square. So that gives 934 squirrels in this first quadrant area of this. Multiply this by four to get 3,696 squirrels in this overall region. And if we divide by a total of 128 square kilometers, we'll get the average number. So there's the big region. Um, so it turns out to be uh, 3,696 squirrels is our estimate and the total region. And that's about 20, roughly 29 squirrels per square kilometer on average. Now this is just made up data and so forth. But I think you can see that a similar technique could be applied to real world data for any kind of density function where we have the contours given. So there are lots of real world examples where this could be applied.